When a brand new Call of Duty drops like Modern Warfare 3, there's some simple formations that you can follow that will set your team up to win a majority of maps, tournaments, and overall just set you guys up for a good foundation for the brand new game. Uh, this up and coming game that's coming out is Modern Warfare 3 and I'm going to show how you can use these formations in Modern Warfare 2 and how they can also compare for Modern Warfare 3 in both Hardpoint and SMD. On Call of Duty, there's usually three lanes. So on Breenberg Hotel, this is already one lane right here. This is the bottom lane, right? Or if you're spawning up as blue team, this is the left lane. If you're spawning up as red team, this is the right lane. Now for middle over here, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of cut this off right here because this is now all of middle. And then of course, this is the top lane or right lane for blue team, left lane for red team. With these simple formations, when a brand new Call of Duty drops, there's a team that's actually in the advantage. That's gonna be the team on offense. Now, the reason why this team on offense is in the advantage is because they're gonna be leading the game. And because they're taking action first, red team is gonna be focused on reacting, right? And trying to adjust how they play the game. Uh, so for this offense team, the first thing that they can simply do is say, all right, guys, it's offense. Let's do a two, uh, two, two spread, right? Or a two, zero, two spread, which means let's have two of our teammates go towards the left lane and two of our other teammates go towards the right lane. And the whole purpose of this is we're getting control of one uh, lane over here to see if we can find any targets. And that's the exact same thing happening over here for A, where these guys are working together, right? The AR is probably looking for some shots while the submachine gun player is, you know, trying to cover his back or maybe this AR player sees that there's an opening and no one's pushed up on this left lane so the sub player pushes up and then he calls out to his teammates yo guys no one's at a and these two guys just wrap back towards a get bombed down ggs right uh, we've seen several teams do that such as Atlanta uh, or we've seen Atlanta phase do that we've also seen LA thieves do that uh, especially when you go through the tier three um, setups so that is uh, what a 2-2 would look like. And now another thing you could do in the next round is like, holy crap, you know, they didn't have anyone at A. Let's do a 1-3 setup, right? Or a 1-0-3 setup, which is you're going to have one player go towards this left lane, and then the three other players are going to go towards B. And the reason why is because you're betting on that this enemy team is going to say, crap we didn't have anyone at a we got to go pick up at a so now they're going to have you know multiple people playing at a and it'll be something like this where it's two people at a one player middle and then one player at b and the whole point of this is this guy is over here in the left lane and confirming oh yeah guys they sent two players at a and because this guy is confirming that they sent two players at a we now have a 3v2 in this right lane well, obviously it's a 3v1, but my point is, is this one guy is only seeing two enemies in the left lane. So these guys can assume that there's two enemies in B and it's a 3v2, we're gonna win the gunfights. We're gonna win the trades and set us up into a uh, advantage, right? Uh, so that is how offense in SND can get you winning a lot of your SNDs right when the game drops. It's just calling these formations, having players on the chessboard just run around and uh, outsmart the opponent, right? Have the right amount of players in the right spot compared to the uh, enemies. Now, what do we do on defense? So that's actually why I have this boxed over here and these in different uh, numbers, uh, or sorry, different colors. It's because on defense, you're usually forced to either play spread which is called a default, right? Which is a default spread. Or you can have a defense where you just hard defense counter the enemies on offense, right? So we're gonna talk about the blue one first. So this blue one is basically a spread setup. And this blue one, you can also do it on offense, right? So like on offense, you, you can have one player over here, one player middle, one player right lane. And uh, the fourth player is just going wherever you want to put pressure on the map. So if your plan is to try to plant at B, you would just have your fourth player over here at B so they can play up at B on offense, right? Same thing uh, for defense. We're on defense, Springberg Hotel. Most, people's, uh, most people expect 
that the enemies on offense are going to go A. So usually you would have, you know, one player sitting like bottom luggage or top luggage, one player top or bottom bedroom, and then one player just holding middle, right? While the other player over here sits in a corner on B or something like that. And uh, these spread setups is basically just playing off of contact and just adapting. Kind of like in basketball, where you just got to adapt to the play that's happening. Uh, so like when this player is over here, he understands that he's alone at B and he has zero teammates to help him. So because he has zero teammates to help him, he has to play it, uh, you know, cruddy like, which all that means is just sit in a corner, right? So if he sits in this corner right here, when these guys fly in, he can at least guarantee one kill. And if he gets traded out, then that's fine because now we're still left in a 3v3 scenario. But if you understand that the enemies love playing A a lot, this is where, you know, these three players are playing at A and your team is, oh, shoot, guys, they just keep going A nonstop. Let's just hard counter them where you can do a play where it's like, you know, four middle or something like that. Well, I wouldn't say go four middle. Instead, I would say a hard counter would be like two going middle and two going A. So what I mean by that is... um Actually, no, here's a better hard counter. A better hard counter would be no one in the left lane, three people middle, and then one person in the right lane. And what this would look like is maybe you have a sniper top luggage or a sniper bottom luggage, just you know being a nuisance, taking shots at these guys over here. And then you have one AR player sitting middle, holding all of this middle, and then two sub players are pushing up L desk and flying at these guys at uh, P4 or double desk. And like that's a hard counter play on defense where it's guys, they just keep going A over and over again. Let's hard counter them by sending all four of us at A. Or hey, let's have you know one player in the right lane and three players push up middle and just get aggressive on defense. So those are the formations that you're gonna find a lot in S and D. And uh, these help a lot also as well in control because control is basically played the same way as S and D. You just have more room for uh, mistakes, right? Um, or actually more room for risk. You don't want to make mistakes, but you definitely want to go for risk, right? Uh, so this helps a lot in control in S and D. Again, same thing in control where it's like, guys, we want to go A on Ella Silo. So if we want to go A on Ella Silo, it would be, guys, let's do a 3-1, a right? So we're on offense. Let's do this 3-1 hit right here. Uh, so the whole point of this 3-1 hit is we're sending three players up on this left lane. So we have like one AR up here, one AR you know, over here looking for some shots, and then like a sub player playing close, looking for damage up close. And then we're going to have one player middle just like waiting for the flank, right? Because uh, these enemies usually always like to push up middle and try to flank us on our side. So this is why we would have that one player middle. And then once this one player middle gets that kill middle, he can then, you know, push up and flank their side or he can just stack on A. And these formations, again, still help you in control, just how they help you in S&D. Now, let's talk about hard point formations, because uh, this is where these still work for hard point, but there's some slight differences when it comes to like an actual setup on defense where you have full control of the map and everything, right? Uh, so let's say we're playing hard point and playing hard point, we understand that uh, we're on, we're, we're blue team, right? So we're blue team and the enemies are rotated for P3. So right now, all the enemies are rotated for P3. They have probably one guy pushed up here, one guy in time, one guy sitting middle right here, and then um, another guy just kind of like sitting middle uh, and watching this player's flank, right? So this is a pretty crucial, uh, like, deadly setup. And this is where, like, on the first set of rotations, you probably die to this setup, right? Because you guys are probably thinking, guys, the hard point is at P3, so let's do a 2-2, two -two, uh, middle and left lane. So two of you guys go left lane, and two of you guys go middle, because your goal is to flip spawns, right? But boom, you run into this AR player, he just wipes you guys out middle, and then this AR player wipes you guys out at P6. Um, so in the second set of rotations, you're going to sit there and go, 
holy crap, guys. On that first P3, those guys held us down middle. So this time, let's fight them uh, just front of hill, right? And the next setup you do is like a 1-3 setup uh, with uh, zero people left lane, one player middle, and then three people front lane. And the reason why is because when you guys are getting ready to push towards this right lane, this one player middle can just be a nuisance and shoot at these two other AR players. And these two AR players are going to be so focused on this one guy that, hey, once again, we have a 3v2 front of hill. So boom, we fly up, we win that trade, boom, we fly into hill, we win these trades, boom. Now we have full control of the hard point and we wasted these guys' times just because we made the right uh, formation call to break hard point, right? Uh, so just to rephrase that again, on the first set of rotations, we think, hey, 3-1 is a good hit. Let's do it. We end up dying to them. We know their setup. So now we just say, hey, let's do a one middle, three right lane. And just by doing that simple fix mid-game, you're going to win that hard point um, for the brand new game that comes out. Let's look at P2 right here. A better line setup would actually be something like this, where number one and number two are AR players holding crosses. One uh, player is anchoring, holding middle, and then one player is sitting up here in the right lane, holding the right lane. Uh, the reason why this is called like a line formation is just because it literally creates a line. And then like, let's say we're rotating for P3, right? Uh, so we're rotating for P3 and we got like four dead. So let, let's say we got four dead and we're rotating for P3. This is where you would have this player pushing out middle. This guy would soak up the rest of time. This guy would push out left lane and this guy would push out right lane. And as you guys can see, again, we still have this line going throughout this map. And then I'm sure as you can guess it, the whole point of this line formation is we're all going to meet up over here and we can play off of each other's trades. So it'd be like, this guy's like, oh shoot, I got two of them fighting me. I'm playing my life. I'm one shot. And that allows these two players to like, you know, work together and flank while this guy plays his life. That's all the uh, line formation really does. Um... Everyone kind of already naturally does this. It's just now that you're aware of it, you can, you know, visualize it and like put it a part of your own gameplay. Um, now, another formation is a triangle formation, which is typically used for like a post plant or for a tight setup. And what I mean for a tight setup is like, again, we can use the P2 example where this is a super tight setup for P2. And uh, the whole point of it, it's we have a triangle. This guy helps this guy. These two guys can help each other. And just like that. If the enemies try to go in the middle of this triangle, they're dead. Um, another example I can show is over here at P5. Where, like, let's say we're rotating for P5 and we're pushing up through this side so we know we're safe. You can definitely get one player to, like, lay down right here to hold his front. You can have one player right here to, um, uh, yeah, you can have one player right here to like look over him. And then your third player could basically be watching like the flank or something like this. Uh, something like that. Um, this isn't a good setup, but you can see the triangle. Um, yeah, and the whole point of this triangle is like, this guy, the second that he shoots enemies pushing out of this door, he calls out, yo, two of them push red, and then this guy can pick this up and kill these two guys over here. And then once he kills these two guys, he goes back to watching over flowers. And uh, the whole point of this guy is if one of the enemies try to flank us through uh, Freezer, this guy's here to pick it up. And of course, if someone hits side door and kills our teammate right here, number three still has the pickup. And like that's just a tight setup where we have each other's backs and we can play off of each other's trades. We're gonna soak up a majority of that time just because we're sitting on it. And uh, that 2-1-1 one, one spread would basically look like this, where you would have a AR player like pre-aiming over here, looking over his teammate, and you would have a submachine gun player pushing up towards time. You would then have an AR player sitting on like one of these middle boxes holding all of middle, and then you would have an AR over here at the helicopter holding down this right lane. And the goal is obviously we get some kills and this is a line formation as you can see it. 
And when we get into these kills, we could actually get into a triangle formation, right? So let's say we win the gunfights. If we win the gunfights, immediately what I would do is I would have my sew machine gun player get into time, obviously, and he would have to watch his hop up. So there's a hop up right here. Uh, there's a ladder, so he would sit in this corner to watch that hop up. You would then have an AR player sitting top helicopter because that's a power position. You would have your other AR going either towards the high-rise crane or sitting top tanker holding all of the left lane. And then your last teammate alive would basically be sitting back over here, um, hard blocking, spawns. And the whole point of this is to help bottom middle to get any rotators going bottom middle. And then of course he's there to help middle as well. And in this formation, we are in a triangle. When we all die, like let's say we all four died and we're spawning up over here, we got a call out that obviously there's a player in time, there's also a player top tanker, and then there's a player top helicopter. What would probably be the best like formation for us to hit to get out of this spawn trap and basically like start rotating or try to find an advantage for a kill? Um, I'm going to say one mid, three top. Cool. Yeah, so uh, three top lane over here. Yep. Awesome. One mid. Yeah, so that's that's fair. Uh, so what we would do is it would be, all right, guys, off spawn, we would call out um, three go right, one go middle. Um, so when you say this call out three go right, one go middle, um, we are basically going to have one player middle having to basically fight this guy over here. He can definitely try to keep this guy out of the gunfights. And then the three of us would have to push up and focus this guy over here, which we could throw grenades and kill this guy. Now, I don't, like, this could very well work. Now, I just want to ask you real quick, uh, Jason, Cyrus, let's say you're blue team and you see red team doing this, where they're sending three top and one guy going middle. What would you do as blue team to kind of like counter them and like stop them from pushing up like this? Um, I don't obviously I'd leave the one guy at the top, uh, top maps on his own with the AR. Perfect. Because because the two guys pushing right lane are going to be obviously at a slight disadvantage. So they're going to be concerned with him. Yeah. And there's so going to be three pushing this right lane, by the way. There's three pushing I, this right lane. Yeah. So I'm I'm thinking maybe. Then I'd send the other, I'd probably send one more person middle and then the other two I would send the far left or to the right of the map, whichever one you could, at the bottom with the blue team to flank them. Is that a good idea? Oh, okay. So you're saying like you would basically have this guy flank this guy or like you would push this guy to go up middle? I would push, I would push one guy through the middle to, to like distract that guy, but maybe push the other two bottom maps to come around i know it's a longer route to take but it might catch them out yeah it might it might, it might. And, and like this is the beauty of call of duty it's like none of us are wrong and and none of us are right because like that very well could work where this one guy up here kills all three of these players on the left lane and then this player on the right lane is just being busy with this guy and then this guy goes for a flank and kills them and then they all four go dead yeah go ahead I mean, the quicker way would be to leave the one guy at top and just push the other three through the middle and just see if they can, while he, the guy up top is dealing with the two, the three guys. The oh, guy be. gotcha. So three this, guys, yeah. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Middle, just because um, they've got three guys, you should be out of between three if you take out the one guy that went left. And then while the, your AR's up top, you know, shooting at the other three, you should be able to come around and flank them. And then, of course, they're going to turn their guns on the three guys that are coming round, or the two guys. And then if the AR is still alive, he's just going to pick them off, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, and like, that's funny because, like, that's where, like, now we just start going down this, like, uh, like the snowball effect of, well, if that happens and this happens, then that happens if this happens. And, and that's what's supposed to happen. 
because very well, like, like right now, Jason uh, and Kira, we just went down like a rabbit hole of like eight different things that can happen. But in Call of Duty, what might happen is these three guys kill this guy easily, and then they all three just push through. Now they flip spawns. Now they have spawns for P2. And now blue team's in a spawn trap, right? And it's like that right there, we would have to fix that. Um, and like, just to like give, like, like this was perfect. And you guys would want to test this in VOD review and you would rewatch VOD review and you would sit there and think, what, how, how do we fix this, right? So just for Cyrus's team, Jason's team, blue team, let's say you guys did lose this setup where these three guys push out, they kill this guy, and then this guy tries to go help, and then this guy dies, and now the enemies are just pushing through the right side, now they flip spawns, GG's, right? So we would re-watch that VOD review, and we would just see, we would just look at the small thing that we can fix, where after VOD review, Jason, you might sit there and realize, oh shoot, this player over here needs to play his life and just like sit down this player rotates over here and now he can shoot over him. And now we have three players over here all shooting and it's a 3v3. And like, ideally we would win the gunfights because it's a 3v3 instead of like a 3v1. So like that's one like fix that you would find and ideally that would help you better your P1 setup. And now I'd like to talk about for yours, Kiro. So, Kiro, yours very well could work. Where three of you guys hit the right lane, you guys flip spawns, bing, bada, boom, done. But let's say that you guys just got, you know, fatal funneled right here. Where you guys just all four went down again. Could you think of another, like, uh, break off that you could do to kill these guys? We could probably attempt a four uh, middle lane. Or like a two bottom, two middle. Yeah, hell yeah. So basically, the two middle play their life, hoping to buy time for the people at the bottom to get an angle on the two guys middle. And then from there, we flip the spawns and then push the point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, exactly. And the way you would like pick up on that, it's, oh shoot, they have a guy in time, they have a guy top tanker, a guy top helicopter, and I'm pretty sure there's a guy middle. So there's only one guy in like the left lane. Let's focus on that. And I love that play where you would have an AR right here, basically playing his life and shooting at these guys saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. And while all these guys are looking at them, you would have like an AR player go top of this roof to like shoot the tanker guy over there. And then you would have both of your sub players just push up on this left lane and flank through. And that's what your sub players would do is one sub player goes for the full flank right there. One sub player kills this guy right here. And then I'm sure as you can already visualize it, this guy would continue the flank. This guy would collapse. This guy would collapse. And then this guy could collapse as well. Or he would like maybe turn around and spawn trap or something like that. And uh, yeah, now that would set up red team for P2. And just by doing that one like push through through the bottom like very well who knows like because you're now over here you're holding down this entire right lane and then one of your other sub players is just like sitting bottom middle over here like sitting bottom middle over here just like playing bottom middle being annoying and then like one ar is sitting over here to watch his right lane and top helicopter and then one ar over here just to anchor and like now you have a line set up and then all your teammates die, and then probably you get into a triangle setup. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, me just wanting to show that these formations will also work for Modern Warfare 3 and the next coming games. And just calling out these simple formations and being a leader for your team will just have some type of structure. And just having that structure where at least we have bodies, that'll make games a lot closer Um than, you know, just complete blowouts. Which I don't know if you guys are playing any tournaments uh, when the game drops, but I also heard that there's rumored to be ranked play coming out. So, in that ranked play, you could also lead, you know, your solo queue team or your actual team. In the people pushing, yeah. just be afraid of every corner, every 
location, just everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So I think it would probably be something like this because these guys would basically be like your ARs looking over middle and shooting. This guy would be like an SMG looking out the cockpit to shoot, shoot middle. And of course, he can pick up left lane. And then like this sub player, there's a bunch of like doorways right here. There's like four. And then there's also a library that he can push into. And then like, you know, do stuff like that, basically. Um, so now for you, Cyrus, let's say that you spawn up and you realize that he is in a formation like this. How would you uh, counter that? Uh, he's got one of his guys. I was going to ask um, near near the uh, the middle lane spawn that I've got. Uh, yeah, he's already got a guy there. Because I was going to ask, can I look over the point that way and maybe get? So I never played this game. I was going to hopefully get someone up there um, just to shoot across. Uh, obviously, while he's shooting across, hopefully the guy at the bottom can go through that that uh, middle lane, that that that, that alleyway. Right here. Yeah, um, hopefully while he's shooting across, uh, That's good. and I would have two other guys push up sort of through P one and come round and come round and try try and get up ladders while the other two are either getting fried or just caught. <laughs> perfect, yeah. perfect. One of the two's gonna be happening because um, he's got some good placements there. So that kind of scuppered what I was thinking at first, but I I would try that. I would try that. Yeah, yeah, and like. It that, that's good. No, that's perfect. And I'm glad that you mentioned what these guys should be doing. Like this guy right here should be shooting at the players in time so they can't look at their player middle push up. And like, you know, in a perfect world, this player middle can push up and like get inside of time, right? Or like play close or something like that. Um, I will definitely say though that that would like leave this guy um, in a power position, but you haven't played this map before, so I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, basically, this guy can sit in a head glitch and watch across. Um, yeah, which is a, uh, which again, that's that's probably why this may not be a competitive map. Who knows? Um, but I I am happy that you picked up on the hey, let's flank the left lane, because uh, that's the whole point of today. It's just like talking about this formation. Where basically off spawn, you're doing a two go left, two go middle, and we're not going to send anyone in the right lane. Um, and then, of course, the same thing is going to happen where uh, Kiro, you're going to VOD review and you're going to figure out how, how do we counter this, right? And the way you counter it, maybe this guy is a AR player instead of a sub player, right? So we pull out a third AR. And because we pull out the third AR, he can sit on this head glitch and go back and forth between middle and the P1 push through. And then obviously Cyrus, Jason, you're going to run into an issue where he counters you and then you're going to have to counter him. And you're going to think of a whole new uh, different break or maybe not even think of a different break. You might just simply say, all right, instead of sending two on the left lane now, since he has that one guy over there, Let's just send two on the right lane now. And like we flank through the right or something. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was the class for today. Just going over formations and kind of having a little bit fun with the future maps. Just take a look at them and uh, kind of just get our brain juices flowing. <laughs> uh, but that'll end our class right there. Do we have any other final questions? Anything? No, not really. That's okay really useful thank you because it, it's going to get me thinking about well formations and stuff now maybe make play a bit smarter yeah yeah absolutely and like again the whole point of these formations is like honestly for leadership and having some type of coordination for your team uh because uh i don't know why i deleted that huh. because like let's say we're playing for uh let's say we're playing p3 right so let's say we're playing p3 and when you spawn up over here, so when you spawn up over here, you see that you have a teammate in the right lane, you have a teammate in time holding middle lane, but you don't have a teammate in the left lane. And it's like, that's an error right there. And you can immediately call out one of your teammates to pick up that left lane, right? And it might be like a guy right here sitting in a corner playing it scared. And you would tell that guy, no, 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 you push out, get control of that left lane. And the reason why he pushes out and gets control of this left lane is so now we have a line a line formation. 
so we can start rotating for next. Um, yeah, it's just uh, using our mini map more, filling in those lanes, and then of course, just countering those enemies. <laughs> 